I'm sorry. I'm unable to process your request as our system is currently not available. Please submit your request to us by letter mail, and one of our agents will process it. That's the last we're going to see of it. It's a mad brush to get going, and I've got a story to tell you. I just got to keep running, and I'm going to be busy at the airport. So I don't know when we're going to have this story, but maybe it's going to be when I get there. Anyway, this is going to be left in the hands of my cousin. We did this the last time. We're here at the airport already. No B-roll, just here. Got to run, got to fly. <laughs> It doesn't have a coffee holder, see? What's happening It doesn't have a coffee holder. <laughs> I hope you can find your way in the airport to check in. Okay. <laughs> it looks very busy in there. It's, it's, it should be okay. <laughs> I think you're over in the busy section. West Jet. Uh, yeah. See ya. I made it through the check-in. I got my tickets. And down that way is the sport tube. So the dive gear is coming with me. Anyway, uh, I gotta go through security here soon. That's me. I just got through security and I'm boarding in five minutes. So these are all cutting real short, these little bits. The travel's just moving along. Well, I've been on this plane before, but this is the start of the trip. Good old Dash 8. Seatbelt and no smoking signs are visible throughout the entire cabin, so please comply with them at all times. Come on, baby, I believe in you. Finally taking a break. Uh, it's about 9.30. Figure I'd give you guys a little bit of an update. Uh, my terminal gate is that way, but I'm at the Vancouver airport at the moment. Yep, I'm totally fast forwarding through this part. I know you guys hate this, but I just go into a monologue here. It's too long of an explanation and I'm gonna explain it better in just a second. Uh, two hours to go and then I'm getting on the big plane to go to Taipei first. So Vancouver to Taipei and then from there I'm gonna to go to Dempsara, Bali. Up until this point, I was super stressed about getting onto this airplane so that I could go to Bali, Indonesia and visit my daughter. I had used a travel agent and unfortunately she hooked me up with a questionable website to get my visa, but it turned out to be this giant shit show. I submitted a ton of personal information, way more than I should have, and that whole bit of business that I got caught up in was just crazy. Anyway. I had just a little bit of time here at the Vancouver airport to sort out the rest of the stuff I needed to for this trip, including putting some security measures down for my identity. And at the end of the day, I ended up going through the government website to get my visa and it was dead easy. And here I am. At this point, I was actually starting to feel a bit excited about the trip. Nice to have a window seat too, just to appreciate the whole aviation side of everything, which was an industry that I used to work in, and also get to view some cool islands from way up high. I think we got up to 40,000 feet, which to me seems quite high, but I guess that's kind of the norm these days. 
Anyway, just about to fly into Bali here. I just want to do a little shout out before we get there. I got this book from my cousin Stephen Davis and Jody just before I left on this trip and it's actually quite a good read so far. So guys, thanks very much. And since we're on to the whole thank you thing, this video is sort of sponsored by the following people for sending me out a PayPal to help me out with this trip as well. So that's gonna go out to Ruth Mestin, Deborah Renaud, Kim Jones, Tina Mooney, Melissa Collins, Violet Parrish, Frederick LaPierre, and Lynette's Floating Lockets and Charms. Thank you everyone so very much. Dear passengers, you may now use the transmitting functions of a mobile phone. Thank you. Not on Vancouver Island anymore. Holy cow, it's hot. I'm going to have to change out of this. Oh. Thanks, buddy. So apparently this is a pretty common thing here in Bali, Indonesia, is you can book a driver to pick you up at the airport with a sign. So when you get off the plane, you just kind of look at all the signs and find the one that's for you, and then off you go. Uh, this guy's name was Kamang. Uh, put his name and WhatsApp phone number down in the description in case you want to use him. He was super lovely. He shared a lot of really valuable advice for someone like me visiting Bali for the very first time. He was also kind enough to provide a fresh bottle of water for me as soon as I got in the car, which was great because I was really dehydrated. And um, overall, the, the drive all the way to the hotel was really nice. He offered, of course, any other drives that I need to do around the island. I could just ring him up at any time I want to, and he'd take me to wherever I need to go. So his info is down below. If you're visiting Bali and you're looking for a good driver, um, I'm sure there's tons of them out here, but his name and number is down below in case you want to use the same guy. And of course the drive-in was pretty neat as well. Perfect, yeah. If you need something, you just tell it. Uh... There goes Edgar, and he just set me up with a room. Uh, oh my gosh, it's so hot. I'm overdressed. I need a shower. Um... All right, I've unpacked a few things in here, sort of spread myself out a little bit. TV, refrigerator, little desk down there, and then the bed, which is. Pretty comfortable, I've actually slept in this a little bit already. And I know that doesn't make sense because it seems like I just arrived, but I'm filling in the gap that I left out on this video because um, I pretty much landed here with a bunch of jet lag. And then I was like, I'm going to bed. And <laughs> I was like, well, this is kind of shitty way to end the video. Uh, I didn't like it, so I'm doing this way. And uh, the view out here on the balcony which is quite nice. There's like a chair there and a chair and a table there. There's some other balconies over there and up there and over that way. And that's another place. Rice fields, other places way out there. Little palm tree kind of breaks up the view. There's a road there. So there's scooters and stuff going up and down there pretty much all the time. More rice fields and uh, the swimming pool right down there. Anyway, that's it. I'm in Bali now. This is going to be a pretty exciting adventure for me. Um, I'm coming at you a little bit later. As I said, I've already met up with my daughter and that's the main reason why I'm visiting here. It was an amazing first meeting that I had with her. I didn't film any of it because I just wanted to really soak that one in and keep it to myself. Uh, but we, uh, we ended up hugging for the first time in like two and a half, almost three years. And it was such a powerful experience for me. I uh, was able to contain myself well with her and I was just like digesting, 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 feeling it all in. I actually came back to this hotel room and I bawled my eyes out here for hours. Um, it was a pretty, pretty powerful experience. Um, and it's really amazing to be spending some time with her again. Um, anyway, you guys will get a little bit more updates as time goes on. Um, 
there's a few clips here, a little B-roll stuff. I'll share that on the back side of this video. But um, there you go. This is the alternative ending to that video because I totally did a poor job of it. So that's it. <clears throat> anyway, stay tuned. The adventure definitely continues. And I did get up to some pretty fun stuff here already. So uh, we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. What do we say? Hello. Hello. Are we at the beach? Yeah, we're definitely at the beach. And we've got these dinosaurs. Oh. Those are some fierce looking dinosaurs. What do we got? The brontosaurus? Yep. And the stegosaurus. <laughs> There's the beach. This must be a nudibranch. A nudibranch? Yeah. Not in the best of shape. Maybe we could take it.